Back in ETV. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Balcony TV Los Angeles. I'm your host, Nick Stubbs. We're here with Sheer. How's it going, man? Good, how are you? Man, thanks for having it's me. a little hot, but uh, you're from New York, so you're probably used to this heat. Yeah, we have at least a breeze. Usually in New York, it's just humidity. Just yeah. all sweat, all the time. No bueno. No bueno, indeed. <laughs> what are you going to be playing for us? I'm going to play a song called Fences. Go for it. Cool. Well, obviously, that's a little bit about some uh, heartbreak. Yeah, a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, I, I wrote that song about um, sort of the modern day breakup and how there's so many ways to still be connected to someone, you know, like through social media. It's essentially like a digital trail of breadcrumbs. So it's not a fully over, over. 
Yeah, I mean, it's hard to be fully over someone when you're like, oh, I can now watch that they just brush their teeth. They used to do that with me next to them. That's, that's still, not stalking. I still don't understand how that's a thing. It's like, you know what? I don't need to see every aspect of your life. Like, give me highlights. Millennials, man. We're the worst. <laughs> uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah, we're all right. We're all right. So tell us a bit about the album and how uh, it all came to be. So I wrote uh, these five songs in my bedroom in Brooklyn uh, after what I call the post-holiday blues, um, which is right after New Year's where everyone kind of leaves the city and the spirit of the holiday is gone and everything gets really gray. And so I went through a breakup right around that period and um, it kind of sank in like right in that moment. And uh, the songs, you know, I had a hard time writing about it for a while and the songs just kind of magically arrived. Definitely a great way to uh, get over it and uh, grow. Yeah, it's also good to like lose some of those when you're eating a lot, you just sort of stop <laughs> like after the holidays. You're just like, yeah, oh, I know, yeah, I'm depressed. You gotta, you gotta purge and clean. Yeah, exactly. You're like, yeah. Well, definitely a lot cheaper than uh, some therapy bills. It's true, a lot cheaper. And maybe like a pretty good hookup on uh, a couple of songs. Yeah, I think it was good. I thought it, it did its service. So tell us about growing up in New York and how you really like got into music because uh, it's definitely an interesting story. Yeah, well, my older brother um, adopted sort of this guitar from this old used uh, guitar shop, and he had this feigned interest that he was going to be like the next Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain, or <laughs> someone of that nature in his mind. And after about a week of just terribly, horribly played Nirvana covers, he realized that was never going to happen. Whatever, it was probably an epic weekend. It was pretty epic. It was just lots of cotton balls in the ears for my parents. <laughs> um, but I was actually initially a drummer, and so my parents were super thrilled when I took his guitar that was collecting dust and then said, all right, I'm not going to be a drummer. I'm going to be a guitarist. And that was sort of what slowly led me to this point. That's awesome. Yeah. I have to really say it's cool the fact that none of your family was uh, musical at all except for your one uh, week of your brother's claim to fame yeah. of musicianship. Yeah, terrible week. So uh, definitely like mad props to actually like go after your dreams and stay true to them because yeah. you have to say there's been some struggles before. Yeah, there is a little bit like in high, the high school years were a little bit tough for my parents, I think, coming to this realization of like, oh, he's not going to go to school for this proper sort of aligned thing. But they slowly but surely realized, no, this is actually what I do with my life. And you know, at the end of the day, so many people in the world just don't live for themselves, and it's really sad they live for their family. People who are, you know, by all accounts, adults, still living for their family. Oh, dude, I'm from the South. Well, there, oh, yeah, everyone sure. does what's expected. No one really does what they want. And, you know, on the, speaking of social media, every Monday, people are like, oh, my God, it's Monday. This sucks. It's like, you can enjoy life if you really find what you love. Well, I mean, listen, not for nothing. I understand their concern. I mean, choosing one of the two, I'd say, hardest paths in terms of struggling. Well, I'm just talking about finding passion in general, oh, yeah. and once I mean, you find yeah, that, exactly. everything's easy. I think, like, if you don't wake up every day and think to yourself, wow, I really can't imagine doing anything else, you probably shouldn't be a musician, because it really is that, like, I genuinely feel like I can't do anything else. I mean, that's really in all aspects. I mean, this is what I do, yeah. and I absolutely love it, so yeah. I give full respect to that. I figure that if this doesn't work out, I could be a chimney sweep, or, like, a churro <laughs> vendor at Disney. A churro vendor. Just something like as polar opposite as humanly possible. Oh, as long as you rock suspenders, I think right. that'd be okay. Yeah, with my shoes, I guess. Oh, the work. shoes are yeah. like, gotta talk I about the... I can move the... to London and become a chimney, <laughs> uh, chimney sweep in these shoes. Have you uh, got your little thing ready where you're like... Yeah, yeah. I also have a bag that magically fits everything like Mary Poppins. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So since this album's about breakups, what is your like all-time breakup song? that you, like, play on repeat? I think um, Warning Sign by Coldplay is just, because it's so simple. He just says, like, when the truth is I miss you, and you're just like, oh, my God, weeping as a grown man in public. Well, I mean. At the grocery store. Oh, uh, that all? <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's a good break. That's a good indication when you're actually brought to tears by a song. Yeah, well, I mean, that's where the love is for it all. I mean, I think that so much of music is about breakups, so I'm just following suit by having gone through something most people go through and just writing about it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and tell our viewers, you've got some stuff coming up, don't you? Yeah. Cool. Um, so I just put out this EP called Turbulence uh, last week on May 12th. It was me and Harry Styles the same day. Um, 
I think he be he beat me by like a smidge. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, yeah, we're uh, putting out some remixes and uh, gonna shoot another video, I think, in the next month, and then. I already have the next four songs kind of finished and going to just keep... So you're just holding on to them, aren't you? Yeah, I am. It's really hard. It's like... You're being a tease. It's like the day before Christmas, knowing exactly what you got. And you're like, I just want to open it and make a surprise again. <laughs> cool. Will you tell our viewers your uh, socials? Yeah. So, um, at Cheer Music is my Instagram and Twitter. Facebook.com slash Cheer Music. SoundCloud slash Cheer Music. Spotify and iTunes is just Cheer. Um, and farmersmeet.com slash your music, which is my, my way of getting back out there into the world of dating. I'm sure there's a Bessie out there for you. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, great to meet you. Thanks so much. This is Nick Stubbs reporting you for Balcony TV. Back to you. Balcony TV.